Welcome to the Chile Law Review. My name is Ben Burnett. My guest today is Samantha, a client of the Chile Law Review, and the man, the myth, the legend, Bob Chile. Y'all, welcome to the show. Hey, Ben. Good to be here with you again. Samantha, I want to pick up your story in 2013. Yes. So you've had a successful repair of your totally torn meniscus in a surgery that took 20 minutes for a set for the sake of the argument we'll say it took an hour right and you come out what are the next events that take place in your life after the um surgery for the knee i went back to my brother's house slept on his sofa for the week because i couldn't go up the stairs so i had this um surgery august 13th of 2013 and I ended up sleeping on my brother's sofa because I couldn't go up the stairs. And um, that week, I developed a crick in the neck so from sleeping wrong on the sofa. So when I went in for my post-op for my knee surgery, I had mentioned to the doctor, I was like, oh, I was like, I got a crick in my neck, can't turn my um, head to the left. And... He was like, oh, we'll give you an injection. You'll be fine. So he leaves the room. As he's leaving the room, the medical assistant comes into the room, and he's like, as they're crossing crossing each other, he was like, give her the shot. Did you know what kind of shot it was? I did not. <laughs> what did that shot do to your life? It changed my life completely. In, in what ways? Did it help you? Did it help the crick in your neck? Well, actually, it did. The crick in the neck went away um, within the hour. But after that, I developed numbness and tingling that went from the um, right up in my rapid trapezius down into my right arm. And I had no function on my right arm, and I still don't. What made you initially want to pick up the phone and talk to a plaintiff's lawyer or, or led you to believe that that was the right thing to do? Well, I gave it two years, almost two years. Because my doctors, they were like, if the nerve is going to heal, it takes like two years to do that. And so when I realized I was just getting worse and um, I couldn't do my, my job being a Pilates instructor, I decided it was time. What made you want to call the Chile Law Group? Well, one of my good friends, he is a attorney as well, had mentioned to me about the Chile Law Group. And so I um, came over here, and it's been the best thing ever. She didn't Meeting. call me to start with. She, she hired another attorney. When you're evaluating the legal process, we don't have to use names. Did you come to the Chile Law Group first? I did not. It wasn't until 2021. What was different about your first experience that you knew that making a change was the right thing to do? Well, I had three different attorneys before the Chile Law Group. All at once. So you were with three different law groups and each of them were more or less financially motivated. Right. So the first two did not believe that I didn't really have a a good case. So when you walk into the Chile Law Group, what felt different to you? Just Mr. Chile, Bob. Yes. Just how he... How he, how he was with me, just how he cared for me. He really touched my heart. Is one of the things you can't necessarily see is when the emotion comes on somebody's face and you get into one of the, in, when you get into an interview, mm-hmm. you don't get the opportunity necessarily all the time right. to see the looks on people's faces. And I definitely want to convey that to the audience. What are the first couple of steps that you guys took, Bob, that were different than she had taken previously with separate groups that kind of separate yourself in the eyes of potential clients? Well, the I remember the first thing was uh, how impressed I was with Samantha. And, uh, you know, it's very important when a lawyer is selecting, you know, which cases to work on that you believe your client, you know, and that they are, they have a, a story that is compelling. And they, they also had significant harm uh, that occurred to them. So Samantha was definitely a very compelling and uh, loving person from the moment I first met her. 
And she's, I knew that she would be the kind of person that would have a great appeal to a, a jury. Uh, every case I take, I take with the view that I'm going to have to try it in order to get full justice. So I don't take cases, you know, with the view that I'm just going to settle them after doing a little bit of work on them. I, I take every case and get it ready for, and go try it if I have to try it. So Samantha uh, had a very significant injury. She had a winged scapula, this, uh, this needle to the neck. To get rid of a crick in her neck was just, to me, it just made no sense. Why would a doctor instruct uh, someone in his office to give a needle to the neck and not do conservative treatment first? And the second thing that appealed to me was um, I knew she was about to be sold out by the previous attorney who was handling her case. He wanted her to settle the case for peanuts. I told her, I said, I was just incredulous that he would suggest such a low number. But this big hospital floated out this defense, autoimmune defense, and the the guy turned his tail and ran when he heard it. he didn't call BS on that, and that's what I did. I, I went out and found the right experts to rebut it, and uh, I'm glad we did because Samantha was sentenced to a life of pain and disfigurement from this inch and a half long needle being injected into her base of her neck, and it hit a nerve. It hit the suprascapular nerve that controls the rotation of the arm, the uh, rotator cuffs muscles and it also affected the injection that they used was should have never been used around nerves it should have the instructions for the for kenalog and toradol specify that it should only be given in the buttocks where there are no nerves so these these chemicals that were in this injection harmed the dorsal scapular nerve and the suprascapular nerve and we had experts that you know, had treated Samantha as treating physicians, not as hired gun experts, who testified about that. So she, uh, she, she's just one of those people that was going to fall through the cracks unless somebody believed in her and took, it, took the case and with a view that, to go get justice for her before a jury. We will pick this story up next week on the Chile Law Review. Make it a great day, everybody.